In December 1942, the situation at Stalingrad is quite hopeless for the encircled 6th Army. An offensive to relieve the surrounded Germans is underway, however several factors act against them. Manstein does not have the forces he'd like to, due to the casualties from the Rzhev meat grinder battle. Worse still, of the troops that are being transferred for the German offensive, only a few arrive in time to take part in this operation. As a result of the Red Army HQ's strategy and partisan heroics, many German reinforcements have been stopped. But even now, the enemy has lower numbers. The Soviet 8th Guards Army faces von Manstein's elite and it moves toward you and Stalingrad. The fate of the whole battle lay in the hands of the ones who can now deal the decisive blow to the 21st Panzer Army. You will have to take the brunt of the fascist attack and hold Gromoslavka at all costs. Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here. Welcome back to Call to Arms, Gates of Hell, Ostrand. We've taken a look at this mission before, before the game was uh, released and before this mission was a little bit more balanced. So we're here now to defend the motherland in the final defense mission for the Soviet campaign in Call to Arms, Gates of Hell, Ostrand. This game's pretty damn amazing. Gets better uh, every day as the developers are continuously adding updates to AI and uh, refining missions and making things better. It's really a, a great little, like, uh, fan-developed game, I would say. The, of course, Call to Arms and Men War Assault Squad are made by the same studio. And this Barbed Wire Studio is kind of a group of fans who expanded upon Men War Assault Squad through Call to Arms and creating Call to Arms Gates of Hell Ostrom. This uh, kind of reminds me of, like, the Defense of Moscow missions, but is a little bit later in the war. It's 1942, so past the whole siege of uh, Moscow, the Battle of Moscow, and... Really, uh, towards the end of the uh, Battle of Stalingrad as well. Well, here comes the Germans knocking on the door. And there's their artillery. We're going to build defenses and hold to the last man. We have nothing but an AT gun and some AT rifles and mines in order to try to stop the Germans. And then, of course, we'll fall back to a village a little bit later. I uh, actually saw this m mission was a little bit more balanced. It was almost impossible with some very difficult... Uh, and heavily armored German tanks that will eventually come down the road, but things have been refined a bit more, and now they can actually be stopped, and, uh, of course, now the village defense lies behind us. So a multi-part defensive mission. We will be falling back, but we will be holding to the last man. Let's go ahead and s slow down time. There we go. And we want to make sure that we give ourselves every opportunity to build defenses as possible. We're going to get, uh, I guess, command of these troops in just a moment, so we'll slow things down momentarily. We've also got our AT gun back here, but we don't have command of this until later. We need to wait until the commanding officer dives on the plunger to blow the foliage in front of the uh, gun, so that way it gives a clear line of sight down the road. There we go. Now we've got command of our troops, and now we'll start building defenses. So the most important thing is to get these engineers up and working right away. They've got uh, supply that they can use, which I think is new to the game from when I played uh, the missions before. This is really cool, though. means that, uh, you know, when somebody's doing, like, a defensive mission, uh, they can't just build, like, the entirety of the, uh, you know, like, the Berlin Wall or, like, the uh, D-Day uh, landing sites just by building a bunch of uh, barbed wire and uh, hedgehogs and anti-tank traps, that type of thing. So we're going to get these guys digging some deep trenches for us. We're going to try to stop these uh, Germans as quickly as possible and see if we can cut them off from crossing the bridge or rather the uh, river here, the kind of a, a bridgehead between two narrow fronts. Like there's some water here and some water here. So obviously the German tanks and infantry can cross over this ice, but I think it is impo I think it is possible to blow this up and maybe sink a tank. I'm not entirely sure, but it definitely seems like it could be possible. We're also going to set up some AT rifles over here. The Germans will be coming down this road, so obviously getting a side shot on one of their tanks would be instrumental in stopping the column that will soon be coming down the road. We're also going to dig in with a few more troops here if we can. And the troops behind us at the AT gun will also be under our command yeah. shortly. Uh, we just don't get them until a little bit later. So we're going to continue to try to place uh, things like mines and whatnot. We're going to make uh, medics into AT uh, miners and also grab some of these riflemen too to start placing AP mines all down the road. AT and AP, which of course stands for anti-tank and anti-personnel. We've got a great position here too to set up a machine gun. The Germans are likely to come down here because of the kind of the ramps that lead down to the riverbank and just beyond that is of course the river where they could possibly flank our defense and we want to make sure they don't reach this area here where we have a mortar set up and that'll be ready to drop on the germans shortly 
All right, let's go ahead and, uh, oh boy, the medic has really nothing for supply, but what we can do is try to set up like a little medic, medevac section for him, like a little, uh, I forget what they call it, uh, triage center, something like that, basically to uh, heal the troops around him. Okay, here we go, we got quite a few mines, anti-tank TMD-8 mines, 160 kilograms, <laughs> wow, that's a, that's a lot of them in that truck, that's crazy. Okay, we'll grab a few more of those. The AP mines are a little less, though. How much are they? Uh, 30. Okay, so that's uh, not so bad. All right, we're going to try to have all these guys uh, place down some mines ASAP. The Germans will be bringing some artillery, too, and eventually a Flak 88, so they will be able to pound this position. Our uh, final objective, our most important objective, will try to be to rescue that AT gun and pull it back, as I believe it is like a 76 millimeter. And uh, that's going to be really good against anything uh, German armor-wise. That's going to be a blessing. Look at that. We got our engineers. I think the engineers now are the only ones who can dig long trenches. So with those pickaxes, we're able to build these uh, kind of longer trenches, which are much more valuable uh, for stopping uh, tanks and troops because you can have multiple troops in kind of the same area of fire. We're also going to set up some uh, positions here if we can. Wow, nobody got a uh, shovel or anything, huh? I'm going to try to get these guys in the flank. Wow, I don't see anybody with a any sort of ability to dig in. Wow, that's strange. All right, well, we'll get these guys back to grab some shovels then at the uh, engineering truck. We're going to see if we can get everybody into a foxhole. Essentially, what we're going to see here is more defenses than we actually have troops. Not a bad thing to have uh, multiple places to fall back to just in case the Germans get past our initial uh, defenses. Probably set up a uh, little, little machine gun ambush point there. We're just going to try to dig wherever we can to stop the stop the Germans and to try to suppress their movements. Let's see if we can build another position. Maybe, uh, maybe next to this one. We want to try to stop them down the river, and we'll put a little flank here. The Germans will continuously push with infantry. They should be bringing several half tracks and several tanks, so it's going to be very important for us to block the roadway with mines, and then eventually. Uh, have AT traps so they can't sneak around them. So we'll probably do it here at this intersection. There we go. Eight AT mines there. Should be enough to try to stop the uh, German tanks and whatnot. And we'll also try to do... Looks like we've got 12 here. If we have any left over, we'll check back on those guys. Very important to set these up. Old shift when you do this, by the way. It'll make it uh, so that way you can place them kind of individually. There we go. Cool. All right, so the Germans might also try to flank here. I believe they can go off the edge of the map and flank around this way. Oh, we got a cutscene now. So this is in relation to our AT gun. Also, I like what, what happens in this game. If you put it into slow mode, I think it actually slows down the cutscenes too, which is kind of funny. It just takes control uh, from you as time continues on. So they're trusting us with command of the only AT gun in the sector. I believe that's a, uh, think, I, I don't know if that's an F-22 or if that's a, uh, can't remember if that's an F-22 or like a Ziz, probably like a Ziz 2. I think it is an F-22. But anyway, a very good AT gun against uh, very good armor eventually. The Germans will bring some really heavily armored Panzer 1s. Let's see if we can speed this up. Nope. Is there a way to skip these? Uh, I don't, oh, there we go. Yeah. So basically, it's just telling us that eventually we'll have command of the AT gun, and that will blow the trees eventually to uh, clear that out and get line of sight on those tanks that'll be coming down the road. Okay, we need to start grabbing all sorts of entrenching tools. We want to try to get the Germans on the flank. This little farm field here with the bank will kind of block the Germans' line of sight on us. There we go. So I think eventually our commanding officer will take command of the plunger and uh, detonate it whenever he feels that the uh, German armor is heavy enough for us to start engaging. We, we don't want to use the AT gun yet on uh, half-tracks or whatnot, with the fear of the Germans might retaliate with the artillery they showed us earlier. So we definitely want to make sure that uh, we kind of uh, keep our little surprise hidden for later, our surprise. We got some machine guns here. Nice. Mounted onto skis. Oh, these are actually uh, rifles. Are there any? There should be some machine guns here, too, I think. Uh, yeah, these two uh, DPs on... DP-27s on skis. Unfortunately, I don't think we can move these. I've tried a few times. I don't know if they can be moved, but we'll try that a little bit later. See if we can manage it. All right, we got more trenches to be dug. Let's see if we can get our machine gunner in here. I think we actually have another machine gunner around, too. I would like to take those DPs 
DP-27s from those uh, things, if I can, from those small and little things here and set them up elsewhere. Let's see if we can pull those out. There we go. All right, all the troops are here ready to go. We're going to try to make some tight defenses here for our AT rifle to hit them in the flank. Looks like we can actually dig in the roads, so I guess we're setting up a roadblock. There we go. And we'll try to set up a uh, AT rifle here too. Everyone will dig and we can just figure out the positioning later. AT rifle's a perfect uh, flank for half tracks or anything else that can come down the road. We got 3 minutes 39 seconds since we're going in slow mode. Things are taking much longer. The first trench is finally complete. We've got our first soldier here next to the gun. Perfect. We can actually trade that for a machine gun. And this guy will be great for it because he's got himself some actual... Ooh, look at that. Tons of ammo. Nice. Let's actually convert this guy completely to a machine gunner. Go ahead and put the rifle in there and all the ammo. We'll probably give this to the medic. And we can grab all this ammo. Eventually we're just going to abandon this position anyway. There we go. Alright, so now we've got two machine gunners. That's good. So now we can set up another machine gun over here in this trench that the other engineer has finished. Now we can start setting up some AT traps with the engineers. Some barriers, if you will, in the form of tank barriers. Yes. Okay, so now what we want to do is try to... Uh, Let's see if we can set these up along the road. Oh, here's here's the mines. So we want to definitely make sure we block the uh, either side of the bank so they can't go down anywhere but the main road. There we go. And we'll do it again just to make sure the Germans don't leave the roadway. There we go. That should stop them from going anywhere except for the roads, which will give us a nice flank on them. We'll have our second engineer try to grab some more uh, AP mines, anti-personnel. Get rid of the uh, minesweeper. We won't probably won't need that. And the trench shovel too, which will give us more AP mine space for anti-personnel mines. Okay. Now we'll probably place these AP mines over here so the Germans have a fun time coming down the river. They'll be under machine gun fire, mortar fire, and then, of course, our mines will be doing some dirty work, too. Okay, that should place enough of them. Oop, I think I misclicked on that. Kind of annoying to place these. I always forget whether I, I need to uh, right-click or left-click at the end. I think it's right-click, so one, two, three... So I'll just go ahead and click a bunch. Just trying to do this on the ramp and areas closer to the bank because that's where they'll probably try to take cover from our machine gun fire. They could try to crawl along the bank rather than the lower part of the river. Okay, enemy attack is imminent. We've got another set of mines ready to go. Nice. Who else can do some work? I think we'll keep our medic in the back. Uh, does the medic actually have a rifle? No, he's got a uh, handgun and a bunch of ammo. He doesn't necessarily need a rifle. We're going to keep him far in the back. I just want to make sure we get machine guns from these guys, though. PPSH is a good weapon to have. Let's try to grab one of these guys, though, and give them the other machine gun. So kind of cool that you can pull the machine guns out of emplacements like that instead of just moving them. That'll kind of be our first uh, defense against the Germans when they come. We'll try to keep those guys in the trench to draw their fire. Meanwhile, the boys in the AT uh, position here... We'll be firing at the infantry and also the tanks. they got rifle grenades, too, so it's possible they could fly inside of a half-track, killing the entire crew and all the occupants, and they're going to have what we call a bad time. Okay, well, we've got uh, machine gun position set up here. Awfully uh, large position, but that gives them the ability to maneuver around and provide more fire on the Germans. And we've got barriers being made, 2 minutes 44 seconds. We've got uh, AT mines going down again. Got our other guy back at the truck for AT. Uh, let's see. Well, rather AP mines. Oh, it looks like we've almost got them all here. Okay, let's go ahead and make sure the Germans never come over this way. We'll try to play some more AP mines along this road. Uh, just on the outside of it. 
Uh, let's see. Now there is a way where we can just click once and it'll kind of set them up in a line, but I like a little bit more spread between the mines. And then some more density based on where they may approach from. There we go. Now this probably won't be enough time for them, but they can try to get started. Our defenses will be uh, somewhat delayed. We also have these wonderful little um, satchel charges inside the engineering truck. So we're going to back up the engineering truck so they don't shoot it. And the satchel charges are perfect for finishing off German tanks that uh, just can't get any closer. It looks like that guy has an AT um, grenade rifle, so let's grab this other guy. And we'll give him command of the machine gun in there. Now eventually the Germans will start using some, some light forms of artillery, so we'll have to watch out for that. And this guy here is going to be jumping into the trench as well. Actually, let's go ahead and have him grab the machine gun. PPSH gunner can be here. We want to try to keep these guys alive as long as possible. We also want one of our uh, riflemen here to be on the mortar. The mortar really has a limited amount of rounds. I think the total count is Dracula. No, the total count I think is about like 50, 50 mortar rounds, which seems like a lot. But when they start firing at tanks and such, sometimes the AI does try to target tanks, which is smart, but also very dumb. The uh, AI tries to, uh, you know, it's fine if they target an open top vehicle, such as a um, half track or maybe maybe a soft truck or light vehicle. Uh, but as for tanks, they can really score a kill. Something like a Martyr III, for example, a German uh, anti-tank carrier, um, kind of an anti-tank vehicle that's kind of smaller has the ability to be destroyed by Molotovs and whatnot since it is open top, but um, there we go, that should allow us to get a little bit more ammo. And maybe a little bit more here too. Oh, I can't move the helmet to the left. That's weird. Okay, anyway, that should be enough stuff for us. Okay, so now we have a machine gun. Is this guy also a medic? Oh, he's also a medic. Good, we got our machine gunner, machine gunner medic, nice. Actually, that's not a bad thing. All right, we'll keep this guy nearby the mortar. These two guys are not under our command. We'll get a re additional reinforcements back here later. And anybody we keep alive will be auto-teleported, uh, except for the AT guns. So we're probably going to move the uh, the truck over by the... Let's see if we can start that up. I think we got a medic in there. Oh, actually, we have, oh, we have two medics. Oh, I thought this mission only gave you one. How delightful. We'll get the truck started. And then we'll move the truck over to the AT gun so it can move it. So it's a pain in the neck to move the trucks in this game. Like, it sounds like the truck started, but he's not moving. Like, can you move, please? You can see exhaust coming out of the, uh, out of the tailpipe there. The engine makes a startup sound, and then it does, and then it doesn't. There we go. Okay. Annoying. Right, so what will likely happen is we'll probably move the AT gun over here to fire on the flank of the German tanks. So we'll go ahead and just move the vehicle over here. If we don't occupy, the Germans likely won't shoot at it. Even though it is an asset they should be shooting at. If it doesn't have a crew member in it, they assume it's just basically dead. And won't shoot at it. Okay, we should have plenty of AT rifles, grenades. Got plenty of troops in the trenches. We got our troops spread out a little bit. Nice to have some spread between these um, positions. Wow, very limited on men. Uh, when we get command of these troops, it looks like we get access to PPSHs, some rifles, and really just more uh, manpower is going to be fantastic because we can then use it to occupy all the weapons that uh, may be destroyed or whatnot. All right, how are we doing up here? Looks like another uh, mine layer is complete. Well, this guy come back and see if we can grab some more. Actually, I think we're pretty much out of AP mines. The only thing that could be done now is the engineers grabbing uh, maybe barbed wire, but I don't think that's going to be that great of a, a move. This guy does have a grenade on him, though, so it could be perfect to keep him over here to flank a vehicle at some point. Keep him hidden. AP Miner is still working on the shoreline. Oh boy, the German attack is pending. Now when the countdown timer hits zero, it's not like all the Germans just show up at once and a massive wave comes across the map. They'll actually attack somewhat intelligently where they first bring a few scout vehicles 
uh, deploy their troops, find out that there's actually some Russians here, and then start calling up the big stuff. Panzer 3s, possibly Panzer 4, and those uh, frightening Panzer uh, 1. They're basically like Tiger tanks, really. They've got some incredible armor, and they're really only going to be killed by disabling their tracks with a lucky AT shot, and then eventually uh, destroying them with like a satchel charge or something. All right, let's get our medic miner out of here. Actually, I say medic miner, but he's our medic machine gunner. And we'll have him cover these guys, too. He'll be in the back. If anybody breaks through, he can open up with a machine gun. And if anybody gets wounded, he's right here. Does he still have his handgun? Oh, never mind. This is just our regular medic. That's fine. We'll keep him there, keep the truck running, and we'll have our machine gunner here. Although, I think this guy's just basically going to be undercover here. All right, what else do we have? These boxes may have ammo. Sometimes they do. They may have goodies like satchel charges or molotovs. Maybe grenades. It could be good to check out. We'll see. And our position there should be able to shoot at the Germans, even if they're above the uh, river as well. All right, minute and eight seconds left. We've got tons of mines being placed. Should be enough to get at least these ones done on this side of the road. I don't know about the other side. Probably not. But we'll try. AP mines, not as important as AT mines. AP mines can be destroyed by tanks. They can drive over them. And if it's an armored vehicle like a uh, maybe a half-track, it can blow off a wheel, I believe. And that would disable the vehicle right there. Crew would have to bail out. And then the crew is literally in the pile of a... in the middle of an AT minefield. Which is not good for them. I wish the inventory would organize a little bit more and move things around based on if there was space. Get rid of this entrenching tool here and just grab more ammo. Which is probably what we want to do. These uh, machine gunners probably won't live long enough. Pre-rip boys. Pre-Fs down below in the comment section. But I don't think they're going to live long enough to be able to uh, retreat to the next position. I think the luck on <laughs> machine gunners is not that great. They're usually a pretty hot target too. Alright, we'll keep our uh, man here close by. What if we can get some AT grenades? This guy's probably going to have to go behind enemy uh, lines. When the uh, enemy ad advances. Oh, this guy's actually got some AT grenades. This could be Molotovs, though. Molotovs are great for open vehicles and okay for taking out tank engines. Luckily, you can possibly get a tank kill with them, too. All right, let's go ahead and see what we've got here. Oh, very nice. we got AT grenades. Perfect. All right, so these two will be on a <clears throat> AT duty when the enemies get a little closer. We'll have to see. They're going to have to be at least around this road. But again, we'll have to see how the Germans react to that. All right. I'm going to go ahead and cancel the rest of these AP mines and see if I can just set up a bunch of them on this side of the road. Let's go with the default setting. I guess we can't. I'm going to put these in like a crazy high density just so this guy doesn't have to move as far. And if we have any left over that we don't place, we can use them in our second defensive position. This probably will be a multi-part episode. So, if you've watched this far, give me those Fs down below in the comments section. Come on now, open it up, and smash that like button too to let me know you want to see more of this. Uh, typically what happens on YouTube is these get suppressed and whatnot, and I want to bring more of these videos. But you guys got to aggressively support them, so that way it can bypass that algorithm, and people can actually be notified of what they subbed for. So do me a quick favor, and uh, do that after subscribing too. Appreciate all the support. we got about 30 seconds now until the enemy attack, which translates out to about a minute with our current time remaining. But I think we are good. I don't think there's any other moves we need to make uh, aside from just waiting. So let's just go ahead and go back to normal speed. And in less than 30 seconds, we will have ourselves a German attack. Now our objectives are to hold the checkpoint, which is the crossroad basically here and the back, and then demolish uh, foliage when the armored vehicles happen, which basically means uh, don't click the plunger until uh, the commander basically will do it automatically. There'll just be a cutscene and it'll explode. All right. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time. Germans are here, so we got to fall back with these guys. Want to try to save our engineers for later. And this guy who has AP mines. And here comes the Germans. Snow drifting on the horizon. Here they come. German half-track spotted. We're not going to use the uh, mortar just yet. Oh, we didn't do too bad with getting uh, a lot of these defenses up. We still have a little bit of time to continue completing those. 
Keep the engineering team safe. Looks like the Germans have stopped to start looking for people. They're scouting. Move in for a swift ambush. Well, no need to move in. They're just literally walking into a line of machine guns. We'll let our engineer keep working while he's under fire. Mortar's going out. It's a very long distance for that mortar to fire. Nice. The Germans going towards a machine gun. Beautiful. We'll put the mortar on hold fire for now. Engineer's being shot at, but his job is too important. Oh, you know what? We're not going to be able to do anything else. That half track has got a machine gun. And I don't want to lose our engineer. In any sense, these AT mines should be enough to stop the Germans. And they have retreated, abandoning their troops here. Probably going for reinforcements. Okay, let's grab that rest of the ammo, we're, what we're here for. There we go, two more. Excellent. Alright, plenty of machine guns set up by the river, that's good. Alright. Light gunfire. Germans are pretty much finished off with their first attack. Okay, let's get that engineer back up and running again. There we go. We'll see if I, I can build our defenses like that. We can also have the other guy assist. We have a lot of anti-personnel mines remaining. But we can save these for the secondary defense. When we do fall back to the village, there will be an opportunity to utilize these guys. So if we keep them alive, we will be able to use them later. So let's go ahead and keep them in the uh, command post position. And try to keep them alive. Their barbed wire and their AP mines will be incredibly important later on. Let's go back to the truck and see if we can grab the remaining ones. Those... Couple more Germans remaining. Let's see how those swine like our mines. Alright, Panzer III is probably on its way. And there she goes. They're going to be targeting our machine gunners. So get down. Alright. German Panzer IV has hit those mines. Typically that only tracks them, so... Good to see a full explosion and ripping the uh, turret right off the top of that tank. Nice. Oh! And a half track getting detonated. Crew is dead and everyone around it and possibly inside it. Well, that's two vehicle kills so far just by mines. Good. Alright, I want to make sure these uh, tanks don't drive straight through. So we're going to try to set up a couple more AT anti-tank uh, positions there, AT barriers. Yeah. Light infantry, we can work with that. Oops, not the entrenching tool, but the... We're also going to need somebody on detonation duty for finishing off those tanks when the time comes. We'll have to have a volunteer. This guy here with the handgun. While he has uh, AT grenades on his rifle. Rifle grenades are really cool. Misusing those in Rising Storm and uh, Red Orchestra. Couple riflemen here shooting at our engineer. Ooh, I heard a mine go off. I'm going to build some barriers actually behind this uh, sandbag here. That way the Germans can't drive through it. Buddy. 
might only have enough supply to build one of those. We might have to go back to the truck, but... Anyway, placing those there means that the tanks are going to have to turn in order to get around those obstacles, and that's when we get them with the AT rifle. All right, two vehicles destroyed so far. Germans kind of in disarray. Machine gunner can bop back up again. We'll have to bring him ammo eventually. Let's get another machine gun over there. Machine gunner's wounded. We're going to have to bring him some bandages. Don't want to lose that guy. Finish him off with mortars. And this guy here is going to be our AP miner. Well, thanks, bud. Firing and destroying our own sandbags. I mean, our own uh, barbed wire. The Germans will be back. Boxes scattered along the Allied territory may contain ammunition and useful resources. You must use these calm moments before the storm to refit your soldiers for combat. True. Kind of weird that voice acting comes in at this moment in the game. Uh, this is kind of a late-end mission and would be helpful during the first mission, but this might be because I'm just playing through in any order. Uh, but totally right that any sort of calm in the storm is perfect for defenses and rearming and grabbing any sort of weapons that you may have lost in the, uh, in the battle. Grab this guy here. Oh, cool. The troops will auto-heal. Wonderful. The only other thing I could hope for in this game is for medics to, you know, sometimes in this game you really need to babysit. And in a large battle, imagine this battle, but, uh, you know, times three or four uh, size, which are happening later in the game. Um, one of the concerning things is that sometimes the battles can be so big, you could put a medic inside of a trench. And if a mortar blast nearby kills everybody but the medic, the medic will kind of just stand there and it's on you to see whether or not if somebody's become wounded or disabled and then you have if you'll lose the entire squad if you don't notice the fact that they're dead and when you're micromanaging a tiger tank on the other side of the map to try to not let it get killed you lose a full squad in exchange for the tiger tank and it can be a little annoying but it's not the end of the world all right let's get our uh, medic on standby here we'll eventually move our at gun there so we'll probably push it through the uh clearing to get some nice side shots on tanks as they approach <clears throat> Our AT guns are also 14.5 uh, millimeters, I believe, so they're really good at taking out and disabling tanks and tracks. Uh, but it does take a few shots. They're good, but they're not perfect. But they're good. All right, let's go ahead and throw another barrier into the middle just to uh, slow down German tanks again. This will make it so it's much more difficult for them to maneuver. There we go. The Germans also will set up a 20 millimeter nearby. Oh, there we go. Well, it looks like we now have command of the AT gun and all the troops. AT gun, I think we're going to want to move that right away. Attention, unidentified tanks approaching. Well, we can identify them as Germans then. And we'll pull these guys back here. And once the uh, once we've taken a few hits, we'll we'll advance again. Ah, these are the pains in the ass that uh, killed my defenses before. They had to kind of change the uh, effectiveness of these vehicles. They're very very strong. All right. Now these could probably end up chewing through all of our defenses, so we really need to be careful with them. Mortar doesn't need to engage those tanks. Those tanks are also somehow capable of driving over mines. Alright, we got more Germans on the way. I don't want cutscenes, I want commands so I can actually tell my troops what to do. So those things basically have like double mounted machine guns. They're, they're rolling bunkers essentially. And as you can see, nothing can stop them. They're driving over mines, and they don't care. 
But we'll see how they feel about a 76 millimeter F-22 1936 light field gun. They're gonna feel the gun in just a second. Armed with HE, nice. Definitely what I want when taking on a tank. HE again, what the hell? There we go. Nobody has a smoke grenade, I wanted to set up cover. Finally, one of these tanks has lost a track. And we now have a large enemy vehicle there. Anti-tank uh, gun needs to stop these guys. Wow. Okay, well now's where we bring up the AT grenades. And try to kill that buffalo there. It's not an AT gun, it's a very deadly artillery piece. Luckily, I haven't seen anybody die yet. Well, we're gonna have to grab a satchel charge from that vehicle. From our engineering truck. Get the mortar to fire at that uh, MG operator. One satchel charge should be able to destroy both of those trucks. Oh, now we've got another vehicle coming in. We got a machine gunner down here. Where's our medic? Those vehicles stopped right there. Nice. Panzer three stopped on the road now. And a fire inside the vehicle. Enemy artillery taking you in. Oh, this is a pain. We've got some real problems here. Trying to throw some grenades up over the ridge. We need to stop that uh, vehicle there. Could try to get an AT rifle up here. This guy. Way too many Germans now. Oh, great, our medic is down too. I think our medic enemy artillery taking you aim. Tried to go above the. Uh... Actually, I don't think this guy can heal. I think only medic training can heal medics. So it's really, do we want to risk another medic for that? A little annoying. He tried to heal the guy on top of the bunker rather than side of it. Oh, nice. Enemy lost another vehicle. That armor's got to fail sometime. We gotta wait for the mortar to take out all these guys. I can only get close to that artillery piece if we clear the, uh, if we clear that position. Another man down. Enemy artillery taking you aim. Let's see if we can go get that guy healed up. Can't remember where our satchel operator went now. Should be able to spike those guns now, though. Doing so with minimal losses is good here. We've got another wounded.
Grab our AT rifle. Wait, did he already shoot all of his ammo? Alright, then it's time to go back. The infantry in the back is a little too strong. I want to try to keep their attention over here. Not too bad. A flank and a destruction on that would have been great. to hit those vehicles. We need to come up from below. There we go. German shouldn't shouldn't be able to see him. Got lucky at one one quick second there, I guess. Got to get a satchel charge over there. Regular AT grenades could do. Not easy taking out tanks with uh, just infantry and an AT gun. And now our medic is down too. Yeah, the uh, fear of the medics. That's what I was mentioning. Every time we try to heal. Hard to heal under fire, but that's their job. Luckily we got plenty of troops in reserve. Try to keep these guys alive. Wow. Luck is everything. Only now are we starting to take some serious losses. Although it's a little bit better than the Germans. They've now lost their other machine gun tank now, finally. And the road is completely blocked. They made their own roadblock. So let's go ahead and continue to fire with the mortar. Damn, unfortunately all the medics are down. One of our engineers is down in the back too. Random fire from those two tanks. I had been fearing it the whole time. Unfortunately, I don't think we can grab like a morphine kit or anything from the medic in order to heal everybody up. So we'll just kind of have to stay in place for a little while. And the vehicles of the Germans just need to be destroyed. They're now bringing in the 20 millimeter. Only losses that are regrettable is really just the machine gunners, medics, and the field engineer. But at least we've got all the other vehicles destroyed. And the Germans are now setting up their Flak 88. Lovely. And our mortar is out of ammo. I don't know if there's actually a way to resupply that. I want to see if we can bring that over to the truck. The truck has supply, but I believe it's only for engineers to be able to continue building defenses. I'm just going to keep everybody else down. We got 88 rounds coming in. Luckily, that little buffalo was destroyed finally. Oh. Get down, bro. If we can resupply here, possibly. Nope, doesn't look like we can. Wow, what the hell was that? Okay, they're talking about retreating. These guys are okay, they're just knocked out. Let's go ahead and get out of here and get off the gun so they don't attack it. I want to save it for later. Never mind, three of those guys are... Yeah, dear God. Crazy randomness on this one. 
the uh, two tanks shredding a lot of ours, but at least they all went into a perfect kill zone, and things could have been way, way worse on that one. We'll now retreat to the village, where we will finally get some reinforcement. In retrospect, it might be a good idea to bring the mortar to the lower left corner of the screen, so that way we can retrieve it later. Unfortunately, our troops kind of abandon everything, which is uh, understandable with the 88 and the 20 millimeter and additional tanks coming and the losses we've taken, but our troops were absolutely outstanding in taking out multiple Panzer III's, multiple uh, heavy vehicles. It's good stuff. Now we got to prepare defenses at the village and attend a briefing. And we will probably do that uh, next time and find out what we have in store for us in our next episode. Thanks again for being here, guys. Make sure you go ahead and uh, add this one to your, uh, you know, your uh, notification bell or whatnot so you're notified of the next episode. And we should have this up in a playlist for you to enjoy more of Call to Arms and Call to Arms Gates of Hell and Metal War Assault Squad. All good games. Check them out on the channel. See you guys next time. Reinforcements have arrived.